Catherine is a huge role model for me because she claims that while procrastinating for grad school admissions, she staggered on the fact that 40% of food is wasted before it's consumed, and then she ended up founding a startup for that called Stellar, or Strella, sorry. If that's procrastination, I think I need to learn how to do better at that because I don't think I have created a startup yet. However, um, Catherine's gonna tell us more about where and why food waste happens and what we can do about it. And please welcome Catherine to the stage. Hi folks, my name is Catherine. Like, like I was told, I'm the CEO of Strella. I started the company in 2019 when I was still in college at Penn studying molecular biology. Read about the fact that 40% of food is wasted before it's consumed, which I thought was a number that just does not belong in the 21st century. So before I, before I talk a little bit about it, I would like to open it up to you. Where do you guys think food waste comes from? Just feel free to shout out answers. Upstream, okay. <laughs> Grocery stores, screw those guys. Cafeterias, what else? Production, home. Okay, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, right? Complicated problem. So there's an awesome resource called refed.org that you can check out and they map all this stuff out. So big part of it is excess. We buy five avocados. We only really eat two of them. That's kind of a problem. We've got trimmings and byproducts. Every time we go to the grocery store, everything has to look super cute and nice for us. So there's a huge amount of waste happening there. Obviously lots of stuff goes to waste just because it gets spoiled. And then we've got not harvested, so I'll talk a little bit about that uh, on the next slide. So if we think about the food supply chain, it's basically a giant game of hot potato that's being played with a number of different players. And so each one of these guys has a specific problem. If we're looking at the farmer, the farmer has issues around, when am I supposed to harvest this crop? And also, who the heck is going to harvest this crop? Because labor is an enormous problem in America today. When we get to the distribution side, the question is, well, what are consumers even going to buy? What's worth putting into a box and sending to the grocery store? And then as we move further down the chain, we've got at the store and at the consumer level, how long is this thing going to last? You know, we, again, to the avocado example, we all have that feeling of, oh man, I just wasted like a $2, $3 avocado because I can't plan my life around avocados. And these things either stay on the shelf for two hours or they stay on the shelf for two weeks and I really can't tell what's going on. So I'll give a really brief example um, that happens in the food chain that my company uh, works on addressing is a really fun fact that an apple in a grocery store can actually be over a year old. Um, and this is because it's stored in these giant storage rooms. And right now it's a giant guessing game with the supplier of which apple can store for a year and which apple can't. So. This is one of the problems that we're solving through the use of technology, through sensors, by inputting uh, you know, new streams of data and things like that. But these types of problems exist all over the place. It happens for all different commodities across all different segments of the chain. And so combined in total, we get 40%. And frankly speaking, looking at the chain, it's more than 40% of waste by the time it gets to you guys. So what can we do about it? Uh, well, as consumers, we can be more knowledgeable, right? Uh, it's really important to, when you go to the grocery store, take a look at that little tag on your produce item, see where it came from. You know, a lot of stuff comes from not America. Try to learn a little bit more about what it is that you're consuming. Um, sometimes it's cool to try to grow something yourself and see how many resources are actually put into the production of that type of crop. Supporting ESG efforts, obviously your vote is your dollar at the end of the day. So. Uh, taking a look at what kind of companies are doing things that are truly important in the food space and supporting them. Two really easy tips, obviously buy ugly produce. For example, if you see an ugly Granny Smith apple that's got a little bit of blushing on it, so it's not that perfect green color, that's the type of apple that gets wasted all the time. Actually things like blushing and uh, sunspotting are usually pretty delicious, so I highly encourage you to buy that apple. Another piece is, you know those bananas that uh, you see on the side that aren't in hands in bunches? Um, those are the bananas that usually get thrown out at the end of the day. So buy the single bananas when you go to the grocery store. And then finally, you know, we can make bigger efforts, right? So there are a lot of uh, efforts around sustainability within the supply chain itself. So you've got robotic uh, companies, a lot in Seattle actually, who are working on solving that labor issue. Um, there's indoor farming practices that allow us to control for inputs specifically, um, thus controlling our outputs as well. 
Um, and then you've got, you know, all sorts of amazing agricultural practices, some of which, you know, have sort of been mentioned here around, um, you know, in improving the yield of the actual field and the farm itself. Um, and finally, of course, uh, I run a company called Strella. <laughs> uh, we build prediction algorithms to um, essentially determine the shelf life of food waste. So if you are a developer or a product manager, we're hiring. Please, please support us as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>